Jaindal, this is Assistant Professor Gagandeep Singh from Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, EC Department. This is a lecture series on analog signal processing and today we are going to discuss the introduction to bilinear transfer functions. In the previous lecture, we have discussed what are analog signal processing, what are analog signals, we have discussed the different type of signals. We have discussed what are difference between analog signals and the different digital signals. Then we have detailed discussion on an analog signals. The second part of analog signal processing is processing which is done through the systems. So, we have discussed detailed discussion on a system, the introductory part of a system. What are the systems and what are the systems that are used for the analog signal processing? Then we have discussed the need of analog signal processing. We have discussed that when we have available digital signal processors, then why we need analog signal processors? The basic need of analog signal processing is that first of all, we have some of the parts from the nature that are always in analog. So, we have to convert analog to digital. Secondly, the main need is that the analog signal processors can be used to design digital processors also. So, when once we have created analog signal processors, we can design digital signal processors. However, we have seen that the analog signal processing units are difficult to design because of the high frequency components. The components that are used for analog processing are RLC and these components are large in size. So, it will take more space to design analog signal processes. So, that means it cannot be designed in ICs. So, to design in IC, we need to have analog active filters or active processors. Active processor means we are using, we are going to use op-amps. So, with the invent of active analog processors, we can design filters which are much, uh, which can be used at a much more frequency higher frequency. So, to discuss how we can use it on higher frequencies, we will discuss the bilinear transfer functions. The bilinear transfer functions, what are the transfer functions, but are the bilinear transfer function that will be the agenda of today's lecture. So, we will design a filter that will be used using a bilinear transfer function. So, first of all, we need to know what is a transfer function. To understand that transfer function, what is a bilinear transfer function, let us suppose we have a two port network. Two port network means we have two ports for input and output. Now, there is possibility two possibilities to design this type of a uh, two port network. First possibility is that we have a floating point, uh, floating two port network. Floating two port networks means the V 1 has different potential at point 1 and let us suppose 1 dash and different potential at 2 and 2 dash. So, they have different voltages applied at the input and the output. Second possibility is the common ground network. Most of the cases when we design a circuit or when we uh, implement a circuit, one part of that network is grounded. 
So, we can say that this part is grounded at a common point, this part is also grounded and the whole network is connected to this common ground. So, here 1 dash and 2 dash are grounded or common ground, same potential. So, 1 dash and 2 dash, these two terminals are grounded, which is most of the cases in the uh, filter design or circuit design. So, one we applied, uh, one apply we apply with respect to ground and 2 is also applied with respect to 2 dash that is ground. That means, in the input and the output side, one uh, terminal is common ground. Now, let us suppose for these two networks, if we apply one input, let us suppose V1, V1 we are giving as input and let us suppose V2 is the output. So, for input and the output, if we take it as a function of time, which is which, which it is like we have seen in the last lecture, a signal is a function of time, an independent variable function of the variable. So, when we have a function of time input signal, let us suppose we are for simplicity, we are using it in the sinusoidal steady state. We are working on this two port network on sinusoidal steady state. That means, the input can be given by V 1 the magnitude into cos of omega t plus theta, simply uh, a sinusoidal signal in the cosine form, where theta is the phase angle, omega is the angular frequency generally given by 2 pi s. Similarly, the output will be V t, V 2 uh, t that is V 2 function of time. As we are giving a steady state, so the output will be also a sinusoidal signal that is the output V 2 will be equal to V 2 cos of omega t plus theta 2. If we write these two equations of V 1 and V 2 in complex form, that is we are taking a Laplace transform, these two equations V 1 can be represented by V 1 bar into S, where S is the S domain of Laplace transform and V 2, V 2 is this V 2 function of time. In If we take the Laplace transform, it will be V 2 S. Let us suppose we are representing it with a bar. The Laplace transform is represented by a bar, where S is a domain where the the axes are real and the imaginary or s can be given by this equation phi plus j omega real plus imaginary part and in in our actual transformation in our actual realization of the function we have always s as a complex number so, V 2 and V 1 are a are the complex numbers or we can say that our study is on S is equal to J omega only. At this S is equal to J omega, if we, uh, if we uh, compute, if we write V 1 and V 2, these can be represented like this one. That at S is equal to J omega, V 1 is the Laplace transform V 1 S. At S is equal to J omega, it can be represented as V 1 J omega plus e raised to power J theta 1 plus J omega theta 1 omega. Right. 
where this theta 1 omega is a the phase angle and this one is the magnitude v 1. Similarly, v 2 at s is equal to j omega can be given by the magnitude this is the magnitude into the phase angle. Magnitude is v 2 j omega into the phase angle is e raised to power j theta 1 omega. Now, if we see here this v 2 that is the magnitude and e raised to power j theta 1 that is theta 1 is the phase both are function of omega which is a angular frequency or radian frequency. So, we can say that the in angular frequency is the uh, the function magnitude and the phase are the function of the angular frequencies. Now, we have two uh, different parameters v 1 as input and v 2 as the output. If we take the ratio of these two that is v, v 2 by v 1 the output by input this ratio is known as the transfer function. This shows the dependence of output with the input. So, like in the previous lecture, we have seen that a response is dependent upon the excitation. So, what dependency is there that is given by the transfer function. So, if you put the value of this response by excitation in different form this can be given by in j omega Laplace transform uh, domain as j omega domain then it can be given by the uh, putting the value from this 1 and 2 we get T j omega is equal to V 2 into j omega upon v 1 into j omega v 1 is a function of j omega v 2 is a function of j, j omega we have just seen that and into the phase angle of e raised to power j theta omega j theta 2 omega by j theta 1 j. Right. So, if we just manipulate something somewhere here in this equation we can say that this is a magnitude of this function that is theta j omega magnitude is equal to the magnitude of v 1 v 2 by magnitude of v 1 or if we take v 1 over here we can write this equation rewrite this equation as this one or we can say that the output this is the output output will be generated according to the transfer function transfer function and the excitation that is the input that means the output excitation the output will vary according to the transfer function and the input applied. So, if we fix the input applied, if our input applied is fixed one that is if we are let us suppose we have a mic and we are using only a speech signal that means we are fixing the input. So, if we have fixed input input type then the output will be dependent upon the transfer function. So, again the phase angle theta, theta omega will be omega 2 minus omega 1 that can be calculated from here again that is this can be given as e raised to power j theta 2 j omega minus theta 1 into j omega. 
So, this represents the magnitude, the, the phase angle can be given by this one. Let us suppose this is theta omega j omega. So, this theta j omega theta omega is equal to theta 2 omega minus theta 1 omega. Now, uh, theta j omega gives the attenuation or loss as we have seen that v 1 is dependent upon uh, v 2 the output is dependent upon the transfer function in as the input. If the output is greater than the input that means t j omega the transfer function must be greater than 1. The output is more the output is more that means there is a gain in the gain in the output with respect to the input. The gain or the transfer function is generally represented in terms of d b. In terms of d b means we will take its 20 log because the transfer function may be in smaller quantity and to generally represent a small quantity we use d b function. So, when transfer function is greater than 1 that means alpha j omega will be greater than 0. That means, if we have a gain the attenuation will be approximately equal to 0 and if transfer function is uh, if the input is output is more than the input then there will be lesser attenuation. Second case, if we have theta j omega less than 1, that means the output is lesser than the input or denominator is lesser than the denominator. So, that means, alpha j omega will be lesser than 0. This is the case of loss or knowingly if we introduce that is the attenuation. So, alpha is attenuation that is attenuation or gain that is significant to measure the output by the input or the transfer function. So, according to the alpha we can design our system in two parts. One is when alpha is significantly high, significantly low. That means, significantly low means alpha is low that is attenuation is low or we can say that the transfer function gives approximately 0 attenuation. That means, if we say the magnitude is equal that means, V 2 magnitude is equal to V 1 magnitude. That means, but are we are giving that is a approximately equal to the output or there is no attenuation. Second case when alpha is equal to 1, alpha 1 means there is transfer function is 0 or V 2 will be equal to 0. V 2 magnitude will be equal to 0 or we can say that there is no output. When there is no output that means, we are stopping the all frequencies that are going to pass through the filter or processor that is known as a stop band. In the previous case when all frequencies are passed through this filter those are known as a pass band filters. So, there is a pass band when we have attenuation approximately equal to 0 or transfer function is equal to 1 and we have pass band stop band which when we have high attenuation or the transfer function is 0 magnitude of transfer function is 0. So, if we see accordingly the value of alpha when it reaches to minus 1 dB, the value of T 
transfer function magnitude is approximately decreasing to the 10 degree 10 percent the important is 6 66 dv minus 6 dv where our attenuation uh, our magnitude of transfer function is approximately 50 percent and if we see that uh, at minus 3 dB at minus 3 dB like we have seen in the last lecture that minus 3 dB is taken as a cutoff frequency. So, at minus 3 dB the there is approximately 30 percent decrease in the transfer function magnitude or we can say that there is 70 point seven percent magnitude remaining in the output. Now, in transfer functions we are we are transfer function we are dealing with the voltages. If we deal with the uh, power the voltage will be scared that will be power will be proportional to V 2. So, at minus 3 dB the voltage is remaining up to this one and if we scale this one it will be approximately 0 0.5 or 50 percent. That means, at minus 3 dB this power will be approximately 50 percent of the original value. That means, half of the power has been lost at minus 3 dB. So, this power point this point is important. So, according to this alpha the attenuation we can classify our filters in four ways. We have seen there are two types of uh, two ways we can uh, represent alpha one is when alpha is high the attenuation is high and other is the attenuation is low when initially the attenuation is high uh, low and transfer function is high and after some value that is the cut off frequency attenuation is high and transfer function is low then it is known as a low frequency. Reversely there is a high pass filter where which is the complement of the low pass filter. So, if we have a 0 to omega c as a cut off frequency for uh, low pass filter the complement will be that 0 to omega c will be the stop frequency stop band frequency. So, omega c to infinite will be a pass band frequency if we have initially the stop band frequency as well as at the uh, later part of the filter there is a stro uh, stop band frequencies then that is known as the pass band filter. The initial value is omega 1 and the later value is omega 2. So, the omega 1 to omega 2 is the pass frequencies pass band frequencies. So, all other frequencies are stopped only frequencies in between omega 2 and omega 1 are pa allowed to pass through the processor. Then the pass band filters, the pass band filter is again complement of the pass band filter sorry the pass stop band filter is the complement of pass band pass filter. That means, in omega 1 and omega 2 these frequency components will be stopped for pass stop filter band stop filter. So, omega 1 to omega 2 are stopped and all other frequencies are allowed to pass. These filters are also known as the notch filters. So, if we see here at low pass filters there is 
attenuation approximately 0 attenuation is approximately 0 initially till omega c and then attenuation is high that means this will be not allowed to pass because attenuation is high so these will be stopped and these will be allowed to pass now attenuation is a value value which can be uh, which cannot be particularly specified because of the limitation of the components so these attenuation we do not take a crisp value of attenuation but it is taken some limit for attenuation similarly for the stop band we are taking some limits of the attenuation so instead of idle value like this one we have some practical characteristics which are given by a exponentially increasing values similarly for the stop band initially we need a attenuation which should be high so that we cannot allow to we do not allow the lower frequencies and we want high frequencies to pass that is why it is called the high pass filter so at the higher frequencies we want lower attenuation again this attenuation is taken by some tolerances that is between alpha max to some value to 0 similarly pass band if we join the two values that means if initially we have a stop band and in the later part there is a stop band that means attenuation is high in between we have frequencies that are that can be allowed to pass so this is a pass band stop filter now here we we specify a maximum value of attenuation for the lower part of the for the pass band and we specify the minimum value that can be given in the particular uh, stop band so in attenuation alpha we have two parameters required for the design of pass band and the stop band those are the alpha min and the alpha max Simil again if we have a frequencies that are not allowed to pass between a band that means if we have a higher attenuation in a band in a range of frequencies that is the band stop filter or notch filter for notch filter between the band we need alpha min and outside the band we need alpha max as the parameter to design our filter so if we see the active filters how they are used we have seen that active filters analog active filters that can be used for the higher range now most of the time we can most of the frequencies we can use like up to this much up to 1 gigahertz more than 1 gigahertz we can use active ic analog filters whereas we can use also the passive filters we have other at this frequency we can use analog filters so we can have a pass band stop band filters which can be used at frequency more than 1 gigahertz at the lower frequency we can use switched capacitors switch cat capacitor active filters and for the lower frequency we can use also discrete analog active rc filters so for different frequency range we can have uh, for a large frequency range we can have active filters that can be used now if we go further the transfer function the transfer function we have seen that is a function of output by input in generally uh, we can say that it is a function of some numerator by denominator 
now this denominator input function this input function and the output function can be represented by a polynomial so we can say that a denominator is a polynomial bm s raised to power m and so on where s is the s domain we have seen that after laplace transform and dn can be this one an s raised to power n and so on now this so the transfer function can be represented by these ratio of these two polynomials now to realize a polynomial or to realize a actual transfer function this must be a rational function or we can say that ai must be greater than 1 a non negative number a non zero number and n should be greater than m so that we can have a rely, real real realization of the filter so if we have a transfer function which is in the second order that is if n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 2 so if we have a transfer function so today we have discussed what is transfer function dependent upon that we have seen what is attenuation dependent upon the attenuation we have defined the different type of filters in the next lecture we will discuss the dependent upon the transfer function what are the bilinear functions thank you